Hey, what's up? I'm Lizzie the Gifted, and if you don't know much about me, I'm gonna tell you about my journey from being a desperate rapper who could only write songs and record vocals to now fully producing my own music and completely changing the course of my career and my life. Hey, hey, get that, bet that, jump shot, wet that, post moves, no rules, chef that, no boo. So here's where the journey starts. In 2007, I was 14 years old and I started writing lyrics. I actually had a crush on this girl in high school and I decided I wanted to write a song about her and I wrote the song and I was like, oh, this is actually something I really like to do. It was just in a composition book. Then I started using music to talk about things I was frustrated about. You know, I really wasn't a very good student. I was super frustrated and mad about school. And I had a really hard time with my grades and I, I kind of felt like teachers really didn't like me. I was super disruptive. I was really rude. I wasn't really a great kid when I was growing up. So I would write about it and I would write songs. I didn't have beats at the time, I was just writing lyrics. Then I transferred and I went to a public school. And when I went to public school, I said, you know what, I don't really wanna keep doing music. I think people are gonna make fun of me, but I couldn't stay away. My junior year of high school, I went back to writing lyrics. Again, didn't have any beats. I was just writing songs and rapping them. I didn't even know how to record. Then my senior year, 2010, 2011, senior year at Las Lomas High School, I was like, hey, I really wanna get into rap seriously. And so my friend Evan Maeda and Trevin Duffy, we basically put a group together called The Roster and we called ourselves Roster Gang, so sick. Uh we did like cover songs. We did a song of Lil Wayne's six foot, seven foot beat. And then we also did the motto by Drake. But anyway, so then that's how I got started. And really the way it started was, you know, I was in a van with my homie Evan and he asked me to burn him a CD mixtape. And I made him a mixtape of all these different songs. And I snuck my own song in there. And he's like, yo, is this you? I was like, yeah. He's like, yo, this is good. You should make a mixtape. You should take rap seriously. That was the first time anybody had told me to take music seriously. So I did. So since 2011, I've been doing music and I was 17 years old at the time. And I decided, you know what? I really want to do music seriously and I want this to be my thing. It started out, music was only like a journal, like a diary. I needed something to outlet my emotions. Music's for me. Second of all, it's for other people. I love the fact that I that my music can impact people and make people feel inspired and change people's lives. The third, honestly, it's because I want music to be my main source of income. And I don't want to just make six figures. I don't even want to make seven figures, 10 million, a hundred million. I want to blow this thing up to the stratosphere. I want to get as much money as I possibly can. And yeah, I want to get famous because I want to impact the world. And I have big goals on that. So dudes who really inspired me were guys like Jay-Z who stepped way out of music and became a business person. Rick Ross, he's got brand deals. He's got restaurants. He's got Wingstop. He's got checkers. He's got like hair care products. Like it's super sick what he's, what he's doing. Kanye West, somebody who was so creative. He was more than just a rapper or a producer. Kanye West is Kanye West. He's it's his own brand. Dudes like that really, 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 really inspired me to take my music further than just music. I know I'm more than just music. So 17 years old, I'm this young kid with, with no dollars, just dreams in my head. So I'm rapping. I put together my first mixtape and it was all beats that I stole off of YouTube. Yes, I stole beats on YouTube. I basically took other people's famous songs and a few little YouTube producers and put together a mixtape. I didn't sell it, make any money, so don't trip. And that's basically how I did things. You know, I want to give a quick shout out to my homie Sean Salem who let me come through to his house and record my very first mixtape at his house for free. He was a super good homie of mine. He and I are still friends to this day. So Sean, thank you so much for helping me record my first album. But anyway, I kept doing music like that. I wasn't spending money. And then I caught the attention of a few people here and there. You know, I even did things like I was just posting on Facebook. I was using bandcamp.com. I was posting on SoundCloud. And this was before Instagram had really popped off. Like I didn't even know if I was going to have an Instagram account till my homie Evan was like, dude, you need to get an Instagram. So I did. Anyway, I really started before Facebook advertising was a thing. Instagram wasn't even popping. I, Snapchat was not invented when I started rap. The other thing too that's crazy is that Datpiff, I don't know if you guys remember that, but Datpiff was still around. So I was using Datpiff, hard copy CDs. So I used to take my mixtapes and I would burn CDs and I would just write on them like Sharpie on the disc. This is for Johnny. Thank you so much for buying or for getting this CD. I appreciate you. And I'd go to like FedEx Kinko's and I would print my album cover for and back and I would slip it in there and I was hand delivering stuff, you know, and that was the way I started out. And I even worked with a couple other producers. I worked with my cousin Thomas. We had super success together and we made an album called B.I.G. We sold those for 10 bucks. So I've sold CDs. I've sold merchandise. I've done shows live. I've performed. I've done a ton of different things. So for the first seven years of my career, that's kind of how I was. I was putting together songs. I was putting together mixtapes, EPs, singles here and there, doing shows, trying to sell merch, trying to just figure out a way to make all this stuff happen. And 
the last two years of my career, I started producing my own music. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna, I wanna talk about the producing stuff a little bit later in this video because I wanna tell you guys about why I started producing. I linked up and I've got three quick horror, not horror, but they kind of are three producer horror stories and they were the three biggest motivations for why I started producing my own music. But the first time I started having someone else produce my music where we were working physically together, it was kind of good. He was making beats for me. We were gonna work together and he was mixing my songs, but there was a couple issues. He was super picky about how the songs were gonna sound. He wanted me to do certain things on the songs because he felt that his beats were so valuable that they needed to be hit records. Well, the problem with that was I wanted to do my own thing. So when I started trying to go my direction with the songs, he would say, no, this isn't good. You need to do it again, blah, blah, blah. And it just kind of created this, um, not a really great creative environment for me. And even one day, and I ended up putting out a lot of songs with this guy and the songs were, they were bangers. They ended up working out, but the behind the scenes stuff just wasn't working. And one day I was like, hey, I sent him a song where I recorded vocals and I sent him the, the song with my vocals. I say, hey, what do you think? And he really, really, really shot it down. And, and if you watch my last week's video, you know I'm really big on feedback and critiques, but it gets to a point where you have to frame stuff the right way. And he was like, dude, this sucks. You sound like shit. Like, this is not good, bro. You need to scrap it. And I was like, dude, honestly, like I love feedback and critiques, but it gets to a certain point where you have to talk the right way to me. That didn't encourage me. And so from that point, I said, all right, well, I'm definitely not gonna work with him again. And I didn't. And since that time, I hadn't worked with him. Again, I hadn't started producing my own music yet. The other time I was trying to work with another producer and basically what we agreed on, and this I should have known from the beginning, but we agreed he was gonna produce the entire album for me, make all the beats and mix and master the entire album for free. But I was super clear, are you sure you don't want me to pay you even anything? Because no, it's all for the love of the music. Then he goes on to say, hey man, like we need to take a break. Like I'm going through a lot of stuff at home. I'm going through family stuff. Like I need to like just kind of take a break from music. Cool bro, no problem. So then basically my music is on a complete hold for a month. Then after that I go, hey man, I, I start hitting him up. Dude, what's going on? I need to know what's going on with this music. Turns out he goes, look bro, honestly, like I'm just not really trying to work on your music. I don't really want to work on it. I don't think that what you have going on is good. I think you're way too money hungry and I just don't want to work on your stuff anymore. Obviously that blew me away. So that screwed me up and put me a couple steps back. The other story wasn't really a horror story. It was actually like a really great experience, but I worked with this amazing producer named Justin Mora and I worked with him up in Paradise, California, which Paradise, California is now basically burned down to the ground. But at my time at Chico State, I worked with him and he was an amazing, amazing producer. The only problem was I was paying and there's not a problem with paying. I believe in paying, but I paid him 2000 bucks to record my album and mix and master it. He did a phenomenal phenomenal job. The problem was I paid 2000 bucks and the album flopped. It didn't get me anywhere. It didn't make any kind of stride in my career. It took me two years to record this album. So two years and $2,000 later, what did I get? Nothing. I basically got nothing out of the album. Good music, but that's about it. That right there was basically the career defining moment for me when I thought, okay, clearly it doesn't just take spending money on quality of music. Cause although that the quality of your music is important, it seems like it's really possible to do it all yourself. So when I graduated from Chico State, May, 2017, I said, I have to produce my own music. So I did. So I started producing all my own music. It's been an incredible journey since. I said I want to learn how to play piano. So I know how to play piano. I make my own beats. I mix and master. I record all my own vocals. I do everything right here. Play the piano right there. The microphone's right there. Keyboard's behind. I mean, I do everything right here in the comfort of my own garage. It's been like that for two years. And what's been so crazy. So in 2018, I'm going to probably get this number wrong, but I believe I put out 10 songs in 2018, which is great. It cost me zero dollars. Nothing to produce all those songs, insane. And in 2019, I put out 18 songs. Again, none of them costed me any money and I fully own all the rights to the beats. It's unlimited exclusive rights. I didn't have to pay for mixing and mastering. I did everything from here. Now, in 2018, were the songs perfect? Hell no. They probably didn't sound all that great. In 2019, they started getting better, but now we're in 2020. Of course, it's only February, but toward really the tail end of 2019, my songs really, really, really started to improve. Now, 2020, I'm on pace to put out two songs a month that's gonna make it 24 songs for the year the point is guys if all I was doing was rapping I would have never opened up my mind to think about the possibilities of generating income as a music producer and because of that now I've been able to generate income is it a lot not really yet but I have been able to generate income all from here automatically all from the phone I've been able to build an email list of over 1300 rappers it's incredible and now I'm able to expand my brand and expand my career and expand my income streams all because I decided I want to open up my mind so moral of the story, look, if you're a rapper, the number one recommendation I said to any rapper was produce your own music. 
If you're a rapper, you should at least know how to make beats and there's videos that I have on my YouTube channel which you need to check out. At least make your own beats or you should learn how to mix and master your own music. It's not as hard as you think and it's gonna help you in the long run and you can generate income from it. I would never recommend anything else. I think that if you're just a rapper, you're in the wrong place. You need to start expanding your skills, all right? Hey, that's all for this video. That's pretty much the story of my journey. I wanted to get on here and talk about kind of the horror stories and why I started. Also, follow me on Instagram at Lazy the Gifted. I'd love to connect with you and if you have not already, Guys, subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button. Smash that bell notification. I'm here every single freaking week coming to you live and direct from the garage. Thank you so much. I'm going to see you next week. Peace.